There we go. So you ready? Yes. Okay, my name's Kevin and I'm an addict. Hey, hey Kevin. Kevin. Welcome to Grit in the 41. Uh, together we grow. Welcome to our workshop on traditions one through six. Let's open the meeting with a moment of silence followed by a surrender prayer. God, God grant me the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change, the courage to change the things that I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. All right. Um, welcome to Grit in the 41. Together we grow. Our intention for this convention is to make available to our fellowship a weekend of recovery, celebration, and fun. We hope that all addicts receive the NA message of recovery while they are participating in this event. It is our hope that the message we carry may truly let everyone know that NA is a place to recover and that no addict seeking recovery need die from addiction. This work. <laughs> Woo -hoo. Mm -hmm. Okay, this workshop is not being shared on Zoom, but the audio portion of the workshop is being recorded using the Zoom platform. I have asked for volunteers for our readings. I'm Bruce, I'm an addict. Hey, hey Bruce. Bruce. How it works. If you want what we have to offer and are willing to make the effort to get it, then you're ready to take certain steps. These are the principles that made our recovery possible. One, we admitted we were powerless over our addiction, that our lives had come in. Two, Came to believe that a power greater than ourselves was a source of sanity. Three, we made a decision to turn our will and our lives over the care of God as we understood it. Four, we made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. Five, we admitted to God, to ourselves, and to another human being the exact nature of our wrongs. Six, we were entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. Seven, we humbly asked Him to remove all shortcomings. Eight, we made a list of all persons we had harmed, became willing to make amends to them all. Nine, we made direct amends to such people wherever possible, except when to do so would injure them or others. Ten, we continued to take personal inventory when we were wrong, probably admitted it. Eleven, we sought the prayer of meditation to improve our conscious contact with God as we understood him, praying only for knowledge of his will for us and the power to carry that out. Twelve, having had a spiritual awakening as a result of these steps, we try to carry this message to addicts and to practice these principles in all our affairs. Thank you, Bruce. Thank you, Ask somebody to read the 12 traditions of NA, please. Hey, Scott. The 12 traditions of NA. People we have on the individual. This is freedom for the individual, freedom from the 12 steps. So, freedom for the group, thanks from our tradition. As long as the ties that bind us together are stronger than those that we tear us apart, all will be well. One, our common welfare should come first. Personal recovery depends on NA unity. Two, for our group purpose, there is but one ultimate authority. A loving God is he may express himself in our group conscience. Our leaders are the trusted servants that do not govern. Three, the only requirement for membership is the desire to try to enter. Four, each group should be autonomous except in matters affecting other groups or NA as a whole. Five, each group has one primary purpose to carry the message to the act of suffer. Six, an NA group ought never endorse, finance, or lend the NA name to any related facility or outside enterprise. Less problems of money, property, or prestige have hurt us from our primary purpose. Seven, every NA group ought to be fully self supporting, declining, and outside contributions. Eight, narcotics anonymous should remain forever non professional, but our service centers remain for special workers. Nine, NA as such ought never be organized, but we may create service boards or committees directly responsible for those they serve. Ten, narcotics anonymous has no, uh, no opinion on outside issues. Hence, the NA name will never be known as the controversy. 11. Our public relations policy is based on attractions rather than social. We need to always maintain personal anonymity to live by the best way one feeling. 12. Anonymity is the spiritual foundation of all our traditions, ever reminding us to take principle of all personality. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. At this time, I want to introduce Donna. Um, she's going to talk about her experience. And here she is, Donna. Thank you, Kevin. Yes. Thanks, Kevin. I'm an addict named Jonna. Hey, Jonna. Hey, and um, I had to do just a little bit of studies. I hadn't finished working the guiding principles book, so I had to do a little bit more investigating into it. I've been sick all week, so like this is kind of trying to get all my ducks in a row or in the same pond, at least in my head right now, because uh, it's uh, a little wobbly. But 
Um, tradition one, so our common welfare should come first. Personal recovery depends on NA unity. And our first tradition concerns unity and the common welfare. One of the most important things about our new way of life is being a part of a group of addicts seeking recovery. Our survival is directly related to the survival of the group and the fellowship. To maintain unity within NA, it is imperative that the group remains stable or the entire fellowship perishes and the individual dies. And, you know, for me, coming into Narcotics Anonymous, um, I had always been trying to find my tribe. You know, I had always tried to be a part of something so bad and wanted to be a part of something so bad. But when I got to Narcotics Anonymous, I finally found my place. And this tradition helps back that up. You know, it showed me that there were addicts getting clean and staying clean and connecting and through the unity and the fellowship of this program and the help that um, this tradition backs up is the value of what Narcotics Anonymous was for me. You know, my personal recovery is dependent on the help that I can receive from the experience, strength, and hope from you guys. You guys teach me how to be a better version of myself. And so for me, um, that's what tradition, uh, the first tradition, um, what I get out of it with my experience. Um, for the second tradition, it says, for our group purpose, there's but one ultimate authority, a loving God, as he may express himself in our group conscience. Our leaders are but trusted servants. They do not govern. Our direction and service comes from a God of our understanding, whether we serve as individuals, as a group, or at a service board or committee. Whenever we come together, we seek the presence and guidance of this loving higher power. The direction then guides us through all of our actions. When we choose a member to serve us in some capacity, we exercise mutual trust. And I don't know about you guys, but I didn't have any trust when I got here. And, you know, learning to ask for help, which is what, you know, step one and tradition one to me goes together. You know, that was about I can't and, you know, asking for help. And then, you know, two was about building that trust because, like, um, for me, I didn't have any trust. And then, you know, when I looked at my personal um, guidance and this spiritual principle, you know, I had to look at others to like show me what the protection of the group looks like. How do we, how do we keep this a safe place? And, you know, for me, that was the spiritual journey. Um, and it let me know that like we all own, earn our own seats here, that we're all equal. And that, you know, not one person makes that decision. It is a group conscience. And that's why we have that. That's why we have the 12th, I mean, the second tradition in place is that, you know, it helps me to be more open-minded and get me out of the way so that I can hear what everybody else's thoughts on things are. Because if I get everything my way, then I'm back on that selfish self-centeredness, which is what got me here to begin with. So I have to remember that um, when it comes to tradition too. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop using. The third tradition encouraged freedom from judgment. It leads us on a path of service towards an attitude of helplessness, acceptance, and unconditional love. Repeat that one again, unconditional love. Addiction is a deadly disease. We know that addicts who find, don't find recovery can expect nothing better than jails, institutions, and death, refusing admission to any addict, even one who comes merely out of the curiosity may be death sentence for that addict, ma'am. So when I think of the third tradition and, you know, I've experienced this in the fellowship over and over. Um, you know, when I got to Narcotics Anonymous, I am fortunate enough that I haven't went back out. Um, man, we're jerks. We're assholes. You know what I mean? Like, just to put it frankly, you know, like, just because somebody doesn't get it the first time does not mean that we need to shun that person when they come in, you know, and that's what I try to practice. And that's why I'm so passionate about this tradition. It's like, you know, it teaches me to be tolerant, you know, and not to have expectation on another person, because like, everybody's not going to come in and get it the first time. I'm not the one that gets 
the only thing I did get right was not picking up no dope. I'd done the rest of it. The rest of it was fair game. You know, all the bad behaviors was out there. Um, you know, I owed plenty of amends when I was in recovery. You know, the only thing I got right was not using. But when it comes to, you know, that uh, third tradition, you know, I know it's life or death out there. So if an individual makes it back to the rooms, I'm going to love on that individual regardless of where they're at. I'm going to meet them where they're at unconditionally and accept them where they're at and try to share my experience, strength, and hope um, about what has worked for me and encourage them to keep coming back. I've seen people shun people um, when they've come back after relapse, after relapse, after white tag, after whack tag, and it really pisses me off, just to be frank. Um, but for me, you know, it's about that loving and acceptance, um, and the desire, you know, I can't judge what somebody else's desire looks like. If they keep coming back, evidently they got a desire. they knows, they know that there's something happening in the rooms of Narcotics Anonymous that will help them. So if they keep coming back, then I'm going to meet them where they're at. Um, tradition four, each group should be autonomous, except in matters affecting other groups or NA as a whole. Each group does have complete freedom, except when their actions affects other groups or NA as a whole. If we check to make sure that our actions are clearly within the bounds of our traditions, if we do not dictate to other groups or force anything upon them, and if we consider the consequences of our action ahead of time, then all will be well. You know, um, the autonomy of the group is our responsibility, you know, to make sure that our fellowship uh, remains alive and free you know we're not governed by anyone we're all equals here and you know as long as we follow the the traditions and the way things are structured then our common welfare will come first you know and that's what it's about for me it's about that responsibility as me of a person is that I can either make or break my presence in the rooms as well, you know, which can, in essence, break a group apart. You know, when there's strife between um, the groups, it leaves a bad taste for NA as a whole, you know, like if they come in and they see us pulling each other apart in the rooms, then what is, you know, what is the beauty of being here if, you know, we're tearing each other down? So that's just my personal experience with that one. Um, fifth tradition, each group has but one primary purpose to carry the message to the addict who still suffers. What is our message? An addict, any addict, can stop using, lose the desire to use, and find a new way to live. You know, um, our message is hope and our promise is freedom. And, you know, for me, the fifth um Tradition is about, you know, strength, that therapeutic value of one addict helping another can't, you know, somebody else can't, a normie is not going to be able to tell me how to stay clean today, you know, personally, I'm not going to listen to an ad, somebody out there that hasn't ever lived and been through some of the things that I've been through, you know, it's through the different personalities that are in these rooms that actually I can gather any type of experience strength and hope that I need and you know that is the beauty there hasn't been a problem that I've went through in my few 24 hours that I've been here that somebody else in these rooms haven't been through you know if I talk and I reach out and you know discuss it with someone in here like somebody always shows up man they always show up and, um, you know, that's what Tradition Fifth uh, means to me. It's still the unity. I mean, all of them is about unity for me, but it's about those experiences and carrying that message, you know, that there is hope um, for people like me, you know, for people like us. And then for the sixth one, uh, NA group, I'll never endorse finance or lend the NA name to any related facility or outside enterprise. Less problems of money, property, or prestige divert us from our primary purpose. It says in here, within the limits established by Tradition 6, we have tremendous freedom to carry the message of recovery and help other addicts. We have clear boundaries set by our identity as Narcotics Anonymous. When we take care and observe these boundaries, 
our outside relationships enhance our ability to carry the message to the addict who still suffers rather than diverting us from our primary purpose. And, um, you know, I think fifth and sixth tradition kind of go together um, for this addict. You know, um, it is still about that therapeutic value of our uh, primary purpose. You know, I've learned since I've been in Narcotics Anonymous, you know, I can I can tell an individual the <clears throat> the freedom that work of the steps has given me and what Narcotics Anonymous has given me. But I have to lead by example, you know, when it comes to this tradition and it talks about carrying the message to the addict who still suffers, you know, um, I have to remember not to carry the addict. You know, I have to remember that I don't get people so uh, clean. Golly. I don't get people clean. And, um, you know, I'm not going to keep them clean. That I have to remember that, you know, for this addict, it takes um, it takes these traditions to help me to be able to live in harmony with you guys. You know, the steps help me get better, but the traditions help us keep this fellowship alive and free. So, thank you. Thank you, John. Okay, our second speaker is Karen. Thank you, Kevin. Hey, family, I'm Karen. I'm an addict. Hey, Karen. I'm so glad to see so many people in this workshop. <laughs> Kevin was worried that we wouldn't have anybody in here, and he was getting nervous. <laughs> so, thanks for being here. Thanks for showing up. Um, and thank you, Sean. Donna. Um, you hit on some really, really good stuff. And um, so I have this book up here, Guiding Principles. And if you ha don't have it yet, I strongly suggest that you get it. It's really cool. It's got stuff in here for the individual member, for the group, for the service committees. And I'm not going to go through all of that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what I want to talk about is how the principles of these traditions, um, how I've learned to apply them in my life. I think you, Jonna, covered how they apply in Narcotics Anonymous and in our groups really, really well. Um, and my first sponsor, so I, I worked the first three steps with my first sponsor and I was like, okay, I am so ready for this four step, like bring it on, right? And she said, are you ready? And I'm like, yeah, 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 I'm just jumping at the bit, right? And she said, good, because we're gonna work the traditions first. And I was like, what? Why? Because I was still in that why phase. And she, she literally called her sponsor and said, she wants to know why. And her sponsor said, because her sponsor said so. And I said, yeah, I know, but I bet you really have a reason for it. Like, it's not just because I told you so. And the reason was they wanted me to learn how to apply the principles behind the traditions to myself while I was working my fourth step. Wow. Wait, there are principles behind the traditions? Like, Okay, so I worked them. And what I had to do was write two examples of how each tradition applied in the fellowship and the program and two examples of how the principles were applied in my life. So the first tradition talks about unity. There are a whole lot more principles beside unity in there, right? There's acceptance, there's um, commitment, there's love. Um, and the way that I was able to look at this that first time was um, I shared a house with someone and there were things that you know we were and, and I'm, I'm just going to mix them all up okay so we were autonomous we each had our own jobs we each had our own lives but we also had this family unit so to speak where we lived together and we shared a common place right and so there were things that I, like, I didn't always get my way, you know, I didn't always get to arrange the furniture my way or whatever it was, you know, and so I had to practice unity, what was best for the unit of our home, and that still applies today in my marriage, maybe it applies even more, <laughs> um, but it was also, you know, that fourth tradition about our common welfare, um, and, and for our group purpose, they all apply in my life, right, um, the second tradition for a group purpose, there is but one ultimate authority. 
And guess what? It's not me. <laughs> Darn it. Because I, you know, especially early in recovery, I kind of thought I, I knew it all. And in like in that home situation, I was the older, wiser one, right? But I was also the only addict in that in that situation. And my roommate was a godsend. Okay. So there are a lot of decisions that I have to make on a daily basis. And some of them I can make all by myself, theoretically you know, me and my higher power, and maybe I call my sponsor or my network, but there are things I can do that do not affect my spouse, right? But there are other things that do, and it's not always my way. My way is not always the best way. I learned that too. And like you were saying, other people have good ideas too, and maybe I need to listen to them. And that's what happened was Narcotics Anonymous gave me an open mind enough to listen to other ideas, to look at other perspectives. Um, I have to talk about the third tradition probably more than any other because when I got clean, you know, I saw the steps on the wall, I saw the traditions on the wall, I was like, mm, yeah, whatever. Um, and I went to some meetings where there were some women that were from a particular recovery center and they were, they had a way of talking about that a lot, you know, maybe not even in the meeting, but after the meeting and before the meeting. And I was like, oh shit, what are they? They're going to find out I didn't go there or I didn't go to any place like that. Right. And they're going to make me go. And first of all, I, I can't afford that. <laughs> I don't have insurance. I don't, and I don't want to, I don't want to go there. And somehow I heard the third tradition, the only requirement for membership is a desire. And then I didn't even pay attention to that last couple words there. I just heard the only requirement for membership is a desire. And then I kind of did hear the stop because I wanted to stop hurting I wanted to stop going to jail. I wanted to stop doing what I had been doing and I didn't have a clue how to do that. And the not using part came along, not too far after that. Um, it talks about, like Jonna said, you know, we don't have the ability to judge another person's desire. Some days I don't have the ability to judge my own desire. You know, like there are some days that I really want to do something, you know, that's going to like outside of myself, that's going to make me feel better and it's not using, but there's always this part of me that has just enough desire to not use, to stop and think about it, to kind of pause, maybe run it by my sponsor or my network or even my husband who's not in recovery and doesn't need to be. Um, and then, you know, have a, have a discussion with my higher power, you know, is it just because I desire this, does it, is it something that's really good for me? And is it something that's healthy for me? Um, the principles, like, if you look in this book, there's a whole bunch of principles behind this tradition, you know, welcoming love, love comes up a lot, right? Mm -hmm. Generosity, including acceptance, trust, you talked about equality, courage. There's an interesting one for the third tradition, but it does. For me, it takes courage to get out of my own preconceived notions and open my mind up and let something different come in and process it and, and maybe even adapt it into my life you know sometimes that takes courage because I get real comfortable in my world you know and and I've been here for a while and it's like sometimes my head thinks that I can just kind of coast for a minute you know not for very long but for a minute and that's usually when I'm about to hit something really good I use that term loosely um that will result in a growing experience Okay. <laughs> um, 
I dog-eared these pages and it pissed me off to have to do that. I want you to know, I don't like messing with my books like that. I had to say that. Um, but I, I came here, I didn't have all my little paper clips and bookmarker things. I was like, oh, crap. So um, tradition four, we talked about it a bit. Um, each group should be autonomous, except in matters affecting other groups or any as a whole. So I, some of the experiences I've had with this were um, meetings in the area where I first got clean. There, were, there was a facility that we rented space from, and they had various 12-step meetings there. And there was a women's meeting that was meeting there on Saturday afternoons, and they had they they were calling themselves an NA meeting and they were they were in the schedule and I went to it I was like oh okay because by then I'd like okay I can go to women's meetings because my sponsor said so and and they're not too bad <laughs> and I went and my I probably wasn't real spiritual in the way that I responded to that meeting because they were using literature from multiple fellowships and readings and and I was like mm. and I had some very strong words and I called my sponsor and I'm like they're doing this and blah 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 and so I went to the area and with some other people and rather than being directed or guided to go there and tell them you can't do this you're doing it wrong they said you need to go there and show them what they can be doing and how they could be doing it in a nice and loving way. And if they choose not to do it, let them know that we'll have to remove them from the schedule because that's not a Narcotics Anonymous meeting. We use Narcotics Anonymous literature in Narcotics Anonymous meetings, period. Simple. You want to use other literature? Okay. Can't be in the schedule listed as a Narcotics Anonymous meeting. And part of that is because it affects other other meetings and it affects Narcotics Anonymous as a whole. You know, Narcotics Anonymous saved my life and gave me a life, right? And I want to protect it because it's my fellowship, all mine and yours and yours and yours. And I don't want it to be destroyed, especially by something like that. So some of the principles here are um, service and autonomy commitment, unity, integrity. Integrity is a good one. Let's stick with Narcotics Anonymous literature. Let's stick with the Narcotics Anonymous meeting and let God take control and it will be okay. All will be well. Tradition five. Well, so I didn't, um, I didn't know about Narcotics Anonymous. Um, I was directed here on a court slip and I didn't, I had heard of other fellowships, you know, other 12-step fellowships. And I was like, yeah, that, that's, you know, that's not my problem here. Um, and when they said Narcotics Anonymous, I went, huh? Oh, that's probably the one for me. Because it didn't matter what you used or what I used. If it was if it was associated with the word narcotic, it was illegal, and I did it too. So I came here, and the first meeting, the very first meeting, I think I had about, I don't know, 20 days clean or something, maybe 15. And that group, uh, when I walked up to it, it was a park meeting in the summer in San Diego, okay? People were dressed like people dress in the summer in San Diego, you know, like beach bums, right? What I saw was bums. And I thought, why are they sending me here? These are the people I'm supposed to be getting away from. But that meeting, I heard the message of Narcotics Anonymous in that very first meeting. And I knew I was home. I can't tell you what they said. I couldn't tell you who was there. I don't know what the topic was. But I knew that I heard something that spoke to my soul and spoke to my heart and said, this is where you belong. This is home. And if you stick around, it might just get better. You know, and some of the people that were there, I was just like, like they had some years clean. And I was like, I'm trying to get 30 days. 
look at that key tag. Ooh, I want that yellow one. Oh, I got to get this one and this one and this one first. Okay, well, I'll, I'll, I'll work on that. Um, again, some of the same principles. The biggest one I think is hope because meetings always give me hope. No matter who's there, no matter what the topic is, no matter how I feel when I walk in or log in, I am better for having been to a meeting because I got some hope. No matter what I'm going through, um, you know, I have a I have a home group that's a virtual home group. We have people from actually the U.S. and Canada, and we meet twice a week. And every time that meeting is so raw and so real and so on topic and so filled with so much hope and so much empathy and so much passion, um, it just, it blows me away. You know, it just totally blows me away. And, you know, I have watched us talk somebody from going back into a very abusive relationship. I've watched us talk them out of it. I've watched people stay clean, walk in, so to speak, and stay clean. You know, that blows me away. You know, if you got clean on the screen, holy cow, mm -hmm. that just amazes me. Because I don't know if I could have done that. I was desperate when I got here. So I'm, I might have been able to, you know under the circumstances, but I don't know. Doesn't matter, I'm here today, we're here today, right? And um, just for right now, we're, we're not using it. That's pretty amazing all by itself. The sixth tradition, I gotta read it again, because I, I don't know why I'm nervous. I'm sitting here shaking like I haven't eaten and I had lunch. <laughs> okay, oh yeah. And, and the NA group ought never endorse finance or lend the NA name to any related facility or outside enterprise, lest problems of money, property, or prestige diverse from our primary purpose. So see tradition five. Um, I'm I'm pretty wordy person. I, I like to read a lot. I have a I have a pretty broad vocabulary. And that one little four-letter word, I was like, I think I know what that means. Like there's a lot of words that I, I I know what that means. And then I look them up and go, oh, maybe I don't. <laughs> maybe I didn't. So I had to look up lest, right? It's not least, it's lest. And the short version of the definition is for fear that. For fear that problems of money, property, or prestige divert us from our primary purpose. So, you know, I mentioned like a lot of people from a certain treatment facility or halfway house or whatever the recovery place, which is awesome. You know, it's awesome that those places exist and they're even they're even more widely accepted today. Um, but it's really important that we don't let them say we're an NA recovery center, you know, or that we espouse the Narcotics Anonymous program and this program, and that would be a big conflict, right? And we don't endorse them. We don't, we don't finance them. Now we may pay rent to hold a meeting there, but that's part of our autonomy and that's part of our freedom to be able to pay rent to meet where we want to meet. Um, I've seen meetings meet in facilities and then the facility kind of works its way in and says, well, we'd like you to share on this and we'd like you to put this in your format. And it's like, no, <laughs> I'm sorry, we can't do that. And if and if it's a problem that we can't do that, we'll find another meeting space because we don't endorse them. Um, and I've seen groups let money and prestige destroy the group, destroy the home group. You know, um, there was a, a home group that put on a big picnic every year you know, and, and they would hold back some of their seventh tradition to fund this big picnic for a year, right? And the bigger the picnic they could put on and the fancier the park they could rent and all that became a really big deal. That's not what we're here for, you know? We can simplify things. You know, simplicity is one of our spiritual principles. We can simplify things 
and make it easy for the newcomer who can't afford a fancy meal or a fancy parking space in a fancy park or whatever, we need to be able to be accessible to everybody. You know, the newcomer, the old timer, the person who, you know, has a fancy house on the hill and the person who doesn't, we need to be able to have everybody and not let the money and property of prestige thing be what the group is about. The group is not about the picnic. The group is about their weekly meeting every every night for a year besides that picnic, right? And oh, don't get me started because I know it's the seventh tradition, but <laughs> holding on to money for a long time on an event that's happening down way down the road is not a good idea. So I'm not going to get into it because this is traditions one through six, but that's my very strong experience and my very strong opinion that it is not a good idea to hold on to the money. The money will come. If HP wants you to have that event, the money will show up and the facility will be available. So um, I really, really appreciate you all listening. I um, forgot to set the darn timer, but that's okay. <laughs> We are now going to open the floor up for anyone else to share on the topic of traditions one through six. Thanks for letting me share. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. We can hear you. Come up where we can hear you. Come up there? Yeah, yeah, yeah just step to the it. front row so we can hear you because I can hear first. I didn't know. I didn't plan for that. <laughs> okay, just step right there. Yeah, it is. Yeah. There you go. We're all sick of the fanatics. I stand up. Um, so, you know, when you talk about traditions, I remember entering the program and all I could think about was me. Me, I, you know, people were telling me what I had to do. I had to go to meetings. I had, I had to do step work. I had to do all this stuff. And, you know, my, that was my world until I got in recovery anyway. I knew about me. Everything was about me. I was that selfish person that me, me, me. Look, look, if, 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 if you were hurt the way I was hurt, you would use too. I am the victim here. It was all about me. And I, you know, I didn't pay much attention to the traditions when I first entered the program because I couldn't understand them. I couldn't understand what that had to do with me and my personal recovery. Um, fortunate enough that, you know, I continue uh, sticking around and, and working my program. I found out that there's a lot more than me in this in this world, in this program. Um, so when I talk about the traditions, I'm not no expert. I can tell you that one thing. I'm not an expert in traditions, word for word. But I can tell you their traditions has changed my life and what I do on a daily basis. You know, it talks about that the only requirement for membership is, is a desire to stop using. You know, I should, you know, you sit there and judge, well, they did it different or they're through their program. They did this or they came up from a treatment. There was all this rock selected and I couldn't, you know, I look at them and, and you almost look and judge. And then you're like, as I get into my program, all I have is now that compassion for that person who walks in that door, whether it is for the first time, whether it is for the 10th time or whatever, because I know what it, I know what it takes to get someone even back in the room to unsay love. Mm -hmm. So I could see that. I no longer was I'm like, oh look at that fool went out back again. Because that's not what I did. But guess what? You know, I just want someone to be alive today. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, talking about um you know what, you know, make making decisions. I would roll over people to, for people to see it my way. You know, because I was so insecure in who I was, I wanted everybody else to believe what I believed so they would make the decisions I would make. You know, I learned in Narcotics Anonymous, it, it's not about me, it's about making this decision what is good for the group. Um, the group became important because when I saw that, I started paying attention in the room to what was important for the group, what was important for the sick and suffering addict, what was important to show up, what was important to do service affected my outside world. Because guess what? I became a better employee because I could listen to someone else's opinion. Um, I didn't have to be the one, look what I did. Look, what, it was what we did as a group to become better you know, in, in my job. Um, it, and it made me better at home, you know, that that it's about unity in, in my house. And, and I'm not like the ruler just because I'm paying the bill, you know, my kids, I could listen to my kids because they were part of this, this group. And so, you know, at the further, the longer I stay in, in, in recovery, um, you know, I 
it becomes more important to me because I do want to become better, not only in my the internal and, and personal world, I do want to, you know, I see it changing my outside world. And and then so what happens to that is as I continue to live in gratitude that every time, you know, longer I stick around, the better my life gets. And it has nothing to do with any possessions I may own. Um, it all has to do about what's in here. So thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks. Thanks for sharing. I was telling you, I, I, I started over there and ended up over here because there was a lot of old people with young people. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we're the middle age group. Yeah. Um, I've actually been studying the traditions a lot over the last several years. Um, I do a lot with uh, my sponsor, we study these traditions a lot, and I also sponsor too much people. Uh, so one of the things I wanted to kind of bring up was um, I don't know if you mentioned it, um, but when starting a new group or, or and and how do you for me the traditions there's like there's a couple like one through seven is kind of like deals with the group you know and eight through twelve kind of like deals with outside the group's issues and I'm like I like to simplify things so like but for me the atmosphere of recovery is kind of what the traditions are kind of like the expression of the 12 steps in our group, you know, application wise. And so we were talking about like creating that atmosphere of recovery that allows addicts to really recover and, and that spiritual thing that happens to each of us like we first get here. But how does that magic happen? You know, what is it that, that kind of like creates that that unity that talks about in the first? How do the traditions actually apply, you know? And for when you've been here for a little while and you're like, well, how do I do this? Or how do I help? help create that that atmosphere in a group so that when we addicts come in they're struggling and one of it and i think that you know i've, I've also said a lot about like you know our history and narcotics anonymous and how the application of the traditions and and, and this change evolved and sometimes we recreate you know same wheel breaking the same wheel a lot of times so i you know for my for me you know i'll just be honest about five or six years ago, you know, I started finding, I really didn't know a lot about the traditions that I thought I did. Um, so I started studying them or trying to went on this journey, I guess, a spiritual journey, but understand them a little bit better, you know, and, and, and you know, they're, they're really, they're really cool in the sense that, that how, like, when you really want to be a part of it, like, when I decided to become a member of Narcotics Anonymous, you know, what does that mean? You know, I know what the third tradition on the headliner says, but what does it actually mean to be a member of Narcotics Anonymous? You know, and, and how does that, you know, being a member, I think, how do you apply these in your personal life, too, as well? But I, I just want to kind of, like, talk a little bit about that. I'm not trying to say too much. But I had to do that journey. Like, what is it? There's no only requirement for membership and the desire to stop using. And what does it really mean to be a member? And it's individual for each one. But for me, it was like, for me, it's show that I did Helping mm -hmm. get service, mm -hmm. you know, doing those things, you know, like when when there's things that you need to know, um, you know, and and you know when it talks about, you know, like uh, how does how does a loving, caring God express Himself in our group conscience? Well, first of all, I have to have a conscience. I have to have a connection with a higher power. I hear the one requirement of membership. This is how I So there's people who come in here, come in there to try to work together that have no conscious contact because they've done no steps, and all they know is I don't want to do dope. And they come in here with a lot of that other stuff. So how do we do that together? You know, and how do you deal with that with like with all these other things happening? You know, and you're a person like, uh, it's just crazy. You're like, well, we what do we do with the first part of me and every me? Right. You know, um, you know, there's a lot of this. It's really cool when you actually start to well, for me, you never actually read, I'm like old school, I read I, I, I really study them out of like the basic text. A lot, um, and, and and really, and it's been cool to watch the fly. I've had the opportunity to be in other parts of the world, were involved in early fellowship development, and or group development, I should say, you know, and then these kind of issues. And you'd be surprised that you know, like our our predecessors that came before us, they were able to work out a lot of these experiences. We don't have to be the same level, but there's other places in the world that still struggle with some of these issues. And, and unfortunately, even in our own state here in Georgia, I think still there's still meetings, there's still groups that still struggle with some of the same issues. And you know, and there's a lot of people who have differences of opinion about what recovery is. 
and the reinventing the wheel type thing. So if you kind of get into history and you look at it, it's 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 we're seeing a lot of the same stuff. So if you ever want to know what is the magic and how does it happen, then the traditions. It's you know it's really where when that atmosphere recovery happens. When you know it because when you go to a meeting that doesn't follow traditions, they kind of ah whatever they're still going along. You leave the meeting, you're like man, I need a meeting. <laughs> and there's some meetings where you go into it and you're just like you know you just you, your spirit is filled you know the, 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 the disease just takes a hiatus and i leave it you know and that's what i love about conventions too because you get to be in that atmosphere for a, a standing period of time mm -hmm. sorry I can't thank thanks you for sharing. thanks for sharing man Anybody else got time for another one? Okay, I'll break the silence. I'm Kevin. I'm an addict. Um, this is my first first convention. Um, I uh, man, I think this uh, I think this journey of recovery, you know, it's just an awesome thing. Um, I'm very grateful today of you know where I'm at, and um, things are so much better you know, than it was when I first started my journey. Uh, I started this thing, you know, uh, July 29th, 2020 is my, is my clean date. Um, and, uh, you know, I don't want to get in my life story or nothing, but I'll let you a little bit and tell y'all a little bit about me. Um, you know, I've, I'm lucky to be alive today, man. You know, I'm just grateful for that today. Um, you know, uh, I was at my lowest of lowest, you know, I mean, I about died in the hospital, um, OD'd. And um, I was just tired of being tired, man, sick and tired. You know, I, um, I kind of, you know, I called my mother up and told her I was just, tired of living this way you know what i mean because i party for like 40 years you know and and you know between the fentanyl and the meth and all that it about took me out so i went to rehab you know and um graduated rehab um i took care of like three court cases in the in the process you know and you know i just got a little bit of probation left but um you know i I've, I've been kind of slow with my step work you know i'm, I'm on the you know, third step now. Um, but, you know, I, I, I listen a lot, you know what I mean? Um, a friend of mine asked me to do this today and, you know, I feel really honored, you know, to be up here. I'm, I'm really a nervous person in front of people, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I, you know, I, you know, my sponsor told me service work is, is, you know, service work helps you stay clean, you know, so I'm all about staying clean, man, and trying to live a, a, a positive and you know jail free drug free life you know what i mean because you know <laughs> i did that for so long man it about took me out off, off the planet you know but you know i'm I'm just i just want to say man i'm great i'm grateful today to be here and uh i think like i said before man i think this convention stuff and just seeing everybody here man it's just a it's a blessing man it's like a it's a grateful thing you know and just makes me feel good you know there's a lot of strength and hope here you know at, at this thing you know i've seen met a lot of people so far up here and i think it's a great thing you know and and that's all i got y'all thank you again for sharing thanks keep coming thank hey, you hey 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 that's a bunch of share on this yeah um you know i remember when i got here yes yeah, the longest reason before the meeting to the end i'm like what is this about me why is this important um you know, and when I got here, I was really fortunate to be in a home group of 
people that practice the traditions experience mostly created a very, very safe environment for me to show up and be off. Mm -hmm. And they okay. created an environment for me to say, I don't know what I'm doing. And I've never done that. Now my desperation kind of helped, helped me do that also. But I never just like freely and voluntarily like shared the emptiness freely with other people. And I know that it was because that was very covered because of the unity, because of you know the, the, the primary purpose of the meeting and, and just the way that they did things. And that meetings don't just accumulate that. It requires intention. It requires experienced members, like not only like showing up and, and, and like saying it, but it requires them to do it, right? Because there's not like an old timer asshole barking orders at everybody that doesn't feel like an atmosphere of love. Right. But I can also be that asshole. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, and so like I'm so to be that guy in the meeting because this ain't what the fuck it is. What are y'all doing? Y'all doing it. You know? Um so so that's my shit. But um but I but I'm grateful for like like the atmosphere because they 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 showed me, right? They didn't tell me but they showed me how to do that, how 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 to create an atmosphere of safety. And, and a clear message in my taxonomies that anybody can walk into that meeting and identify with another member, but more importantly, they can have hope that they can recover also. Mm -hmm. And it was like shit. That was huge for me. And I was just, and I didn't understand, like, I didn't understand that when I got here. But as I moved away and got involved in other meetings and other areas and other groups, I was like, oh shit, like that was a really special thing. That they had at that home group, um, that not every home group that I was a part of after that I had that same experience. Um, and then I started getting involved in service structure and all that stuff. Um, because narcotics and I was the first good thing I'd ever been a part of. Mm -hmm. I'd never been a part of shit that was good and membership. You know, the only part of membership is a desire, but what does membership look like? Right? Mm -hmm. Not everybody that comes to narcotics and Anonymous is a member. A lot of people are just passing through. Yeah. And that's okay. I was that guy for a long freaking time. I was just passing through. Um, and membership, when, it, when, when you remember something, you take ownership. Of it. That's right. Mm -hmm. And it becomes important, mm -hmm. right? The atmosphere of recovery is important. That newcomer having a clear message in our house and office becomes important because you want for every new member to have the same experience that. I wanted the new member to have the same experience that I had. Without that experience, I don't, I don't think I'd be there. I mean, seriously. Um, you know, and so that becomes very important. So that means getting there early. That means uh, at group business meeting when the chairperson, whoever's chairing Wednesday night, they understand clearly what the responsibilities are. Do you have the, the code to the building? Do you know to get here 30 minutes early? Do you know how to have the coffee started and have the chairs out? And, you know, you don't show up five minutes before the meeting. You start throwing shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, do you have a discussion leader lined up with a clear NA message? Mm -hmm. All those things have a lot to do with the message in the meeting. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and so uh, I can I can I can border on like being controlling in that way because, but I know that when it's my turn to chair the meeting, that's what I do. Mm -hmm. Right. And I can and I can and I can show other home group members through my through my uh, my example of like the benefits of doing that stuff. Um, but I really appreciate and have a deep respect. And I love that. I love that. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of uh, members with a lot of time. May, I've heard some members that aren't super thrilled about the new literature that we have. I think it's yeah. all of it. I think it's all great. Yeah. Um, and I love being able to sort of look through some of that newer. Uh, different, it's written in a different style. Mm -hmm. Literature, the, the journey continues. Mm -hmm. Love that book. They have some of the best little nuggets of just phrases throughout that, um, especially in the relationship section, which is a terribly painful area. <laughs> <laughs> <Right? laughs> um, can be. Can the place of uh, yourself and others. Right? Yeah. Or, you know, stuff. <laughs> um, and the new um spiritual principle of day yes love that. Love that. and it references other people's mm -hmm. uh, 
and, and I love all that stuff. And uh, you know, but the traditions really kind of bind us together. They yeah. kind of bind us together. And I was talking to a, a guy, uh, and I work at this place. It's a recovery place, right? It's not an NA place, but it is a recovery place. And he was like, "Why do they turn the AA literature around at the NA meeting? You know, what about the alcoholic that shows up to the NA meeting?" And I was like, "What the fuck's the NA meeting?" You know, and, but they do say alcohol is a drug, right? But he might want to go to an AA meeting. And I, well, well, I think all of them should be out of this. I was like, well, that's why you're not part of my own meeting. I guess. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, just keep coming back. You know? Yeah. Um, yes. But it's just a conversation that if we start doing that, yeah. like, Blurred. we dilute the message and then they go to another NA meeting. They're not doing all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, we dilute the message. And I also kept talking to him about you know, the, 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 the founding members of Narcotics Anonymous busted their ass for us to be independent and free. That's right. Right? Um, the blood, sweat, and tears that went into the early days of the fellowship for us to be independent and have our old age. Mm -hmm. You know, and to show that NA members do recover because if we're on the street not too long ago is we don't give them. We don't give them. We don't stay clean. And that's not true. So, you know, um, so all that goes into that. Uh, and it, and it and it usually takes time and being being an active member before it starts to click through our experience. And so uh, thank you guys for thank you uh, for talk and thank you guys for letting me share. Thank Thanks you. for sharing. Thanks, nice Sharon. I do want to say that um when I worked the traditions um that first time was in the How and Why book. Okay, if you look in the How and Why book, because a lot of people don't go back to that tradition section, but. It talks about, you know, like it has a section. And I, I just thought that was so cool. I was like, why doesn't the step section have that section? It's, it's practicing spiritual principles. It was like real clear and easy. This book makes it really simple for those of us who want it the easier, softer, faster way, right? It lists all the principles real close. <laughs> but it's kind of a shortcut, but I don't care. Our our literature tells us, and in what you were saying, Hank, about um, carrying the message, our fifth tradition is carrying the message that Narcotics Anonymous is a viable place to live clean and recover our lives. Thank you, Karen. Thanks, Karen. Yeah, my name's Todd. I'm an addict. Hey, Todd. That's, that's where I'm at. Like, you know, I'm a relatively new member, you know, it's no relational, well, right? Well, so, uh, you know, visiting various groups and this and that and guiding principles in the book, you know, it's, I had the pleasure of studying with some hardcore dudes in a group study out of the guiding principle book. And it's fantastic, the questions they ask, just like in a step working guide, you know? I never thought of any of this, you know what I mean? I was so self-absorbed and everything, so, so self-accepted and obsessed. I never thought of some of this stuff, you know? So it's interesting to look at the questions that are in that book and think about them. You know, you're like, oh, you know, um, I mean, applying to my, to my life, you know, that was a good one that you said, you know? But it's like, you know, the second tradition, you know, the group conscious, this is our, wait, 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 wait read it again real quick so I don't lose my thought. For a group purpose, there's one ultimate authority. Loving guys may express himself in our group conscious. Our leaders are not those service people, whatever. But, uh, and how you said, like, okay, second step, second tradition, you know, and like, when I came to Archives Anonymous, it's like, okay, you know, second one is, is hope, you know, I hope I can be restored to that sanity, you know, like, complete something power greater than myself can restore me to sanity. And it's like, I had all this trouble in my home group, you know, home group members are leaving, you know, our treasurer left, our GSR left, you know, everything's falling apart. Home group members are leaving and everything. And one dude stood, stayed there and he knew of the traditions and everything like that. He's like, just sit back and watch, you know? And then as you start visiting various groups and you see the difference in home groups and the, the tribalness or whatever, and different personalities of different home groups, and you look at it and you, you start studying these traditions and seeing what it takes to, find a home group to keep a, a meeting running, you know, and I got that pleasure, not a convention though, like, you know, you guys are back there making a convention run, that's our report, you know, but uh, second tradition, you know, along, along the line of the second step, I came to believe a power greater in myself and restore this group back to stand, you Try. know, and keep it sane, uh -huh. you know, even when things look like they're falling uh -huh. apart at the group level, at the family level, at the work level, things like that, mm -hmm. you know, and you come to believe that, oh man, I could be, I got restored back to sanity, you know, the higher power restored me back to sanity. Maybe this power can restore this group back to sanity, you know, so it was like a, like a rock came out of the sky and hit me, you know, so it was exciting, you know, it's like you're saying when you visit various groups and do all that, but uh, 
you know, it's good to have the faith and the hope that uh, we can all be restored back to sanity. You know, thanks for letting me share. Thanks for sharing. Thanks, thanks for sharing, man. Here. Keep coming back. So, yes, Scott. My name's Lisa Manatic. Hey, Lisa. Um, and this is the one thing that I thought about. I guess it's been talked about all weekend is relationships. We cared about it once and we're on that with stuff. But anyway, that third tradition that Donna was talking about and making sure, and I've always been really good about welcoming the newcomer back in the room. And I had no problem doing that. Fonties talking to him. I made a decision, you know, years ago, like, to not sponsor people. I don't think that, that if they relapse several times, it's time to find another sponsor. Yes, right. Like, it's not working for me. I agree you. With I love you. Uh -huh. I find somebody else. Uh, where I ran into this trouble was applying that tradition to someone who was, it was affecting my life personally, mm -hmm. that was living in my home that kept going back out. Mm -hmm. And the result was like, you can't throw me out. I'm suffering at it. I need help. What are you going to charge? Narcotics Anonymous is turning their back on me now. And so, I mean, be, I just kept thinking about <laughs> that. Good at it. Look at my damn face. Like, just enough. It would be dangerous, you know? And, and so one of the things that I had to learn is that the traditions aren't there for that reason. They're there to, to protect the new member, but I need to protect myself, right. too. Uh -huh. And just because you're a newcomer needing help, yeah, I'm going to welcome you at the meeting, but that doesn't mean that I give you the key to my house oh. and stay. <laughs> no, or you know, let me borrow money or any of those other kinds of things. That's yeah. not what it's talking about. Yeah. You know? And and I just I found myself in a position um, where that you know he was using it against me for that. And uh, you know, I can still that anyway. But um, you know, the, the reason I wanted to come to this workshop today is is I truly believe. You know, that saying the steps are for me and the visions are for us. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's just kind of where I've been. I'm doing the steps strictly on relationships and all relationships in my life. And um, just to be able to hear some things again. And I just heard some things from you guys today that I forget. You know, somebody that doesn't have a lot of time comes in and been studying and pouring through those books. And, and I hear a message again. You know, and it lets me know what I need to do. So I'm really glad to be here. And I'm grateful that we have these traditions. I do not think we would have survived ourselves without mm -hmm. them. Um, <laughs> <you> know, <laughs> because it's the way that we operate and function and think, mm -hmm. I mean, it takes all of us to make this thing work. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm just so grateful for that. Thanks. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. Hi, Jason. I had a couple of miles to walk up across the way. Um, <laughs> um, so the neat thing about um, this program that yeah, it yeah. seems like it keeps popping up to me is when I worked the staff, it was real important for me to realize that all the steps were in, in past tense. And that was because this fellowship had an experience with them. Um, it introduced me to the we of the program. You know that there that this is a weed program. People have already done it before me, and I needed. I, I if I if I would become willing to get on board with what has already happened, and let that inspire me to become a part of the traditions are also written in a weed sense, but they're in present tense. They're not in past tense. They're in present tense. So when I become a part of the week by working these steps and have personal recovery and I get some, we, members of NA, I need these traditions to keep us in the week and not going back into the eye. Uh -huh. The most of these traditions keep me focused on we and not I. Mm -hmm. They're just like 
the very first thing in the in after the the traditions are read, like in the reading formally, it, it, it's a, an explanation of the first one. Like it usually isn't until we get involved with service that someone points out why the first tradition is the first damn tradition. Because we're in here doing our best to work work together, but I come out as me. Mm -hmm. And I typically am a wrecking ball or I'm a, uh, you know, I'm, I'm an organizer or I'm a perfectionist or whatever it is that I am. And if I'm not careful, I will affect other people's personal recovery and it will eventually come back and affect my personal recovery if I don't realize that my actions start with unity. So sometimes I have to place, put, take and separate myself from what I want right now. Or what my predecessors tell me, that's that past tense thing. Hey, guess what? We've tried that shit before. And <laughs> you're right right now. But if we go out here and we say you're right right now, six people are leaving and you're going to do seven people's work because you're only one person <laughs> and you already have something to do and you're going to run six people that are doing something off. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, shit. That's what that means. You know what that means? Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Are the ties that bind us together. Yes. Like when I stop following these traditions, I'm taking all these little zip ties off and all these, you know, all these things that are tying us together and binding us together. I stop following them. I'm taking all of the safeties off that actually keep us together. They're principle. And so, like it said, like the, it took a whole nother fellowship to figure this out. And they let us borrow what they figured out mm -hmm. to apply to our fellowship. Mm -hmm. And we, we get our own hard won experience to, to go with what they have. They have, you know, it's still proven today what they had hard won learned before. Um, it's like there, none of these lessons are learned easy. You know, it's, uh, there's, a, there's a struggle that comes with, with um, getting to something. Like the struggle of going through it. I learn it, I go through it, and then there's what I got from it. You know, um, I, you know, it's like sacred tradition, you know. Okay, you're not in charge. We've got something that's in charge already, so that we're just going to go ahead and say that, right? You're not, you know, it's, it's not you, it's not. Right, that's it. We figured that out and do what, you know, our power's in charge, right? And then if the only requirement for membership is that desire to stop using, that means that there is no excuses. There's only one excuse that I'm not involved, and that's I want to get high. I don't want to be. We don't set any standard up that says you got to follow this to be a member. No, the only thing that'll keep you from being a member is when you don't want to be a fucking member. Otherwise, you can be a member. With a little participation or a lot of participation. You know, and it keeps building on that with this. These traditions just take away all my excuses for, for, for leaving, for being in charge. It's like, okay, I'm going to teach you how to be involved without messing things up. How are we going to do that? We'll follow the tradition. Right. <laughs> you know, and uh, it's really it's a beautiful thing. Um, and um, I think I, I love the fact that it's the ties that bind us together. Like, it took me getting literature beat when I was new. Right, like so I had a concept guide and a basic text at the ASC. For the, I was like 60 days clean, and they were sliding them. The one whooped out a basic text like a sword. The other one had the concept guide. This page right here, you look right here. All that shit heard in the minute, in the moment. You know, I, I went back to my group. I don't want to go back. <laughs> I mean, we had, we had like four weeks to study literature together as a group to figure out why I needed to, that, that it was, they did exactly what they were supposed to do. They pointed me towards the literature to figure out what was going to hurt and what was going to help. This was a concept that I talked about, that, you know, if we're not careful, we'll do more harm trying to do good than mm -hmm. we do good. And we're trying to do good when we do it, right? It's like, man. I think they wanted that shit out and I'm glad they did. <laughs> I am glad. Back then, not so much. Um, anyway, I'll keep coming back. Thanks, Thanks for sharing. Thanks, Jason. Bruce, I'm going to add I'm Bruce. Uh, I wasn't going to share, but I'm going to try to keep my, my thoughts in order here. Um, 
So uh, I've heard a lot of good stuff today. Um, so as far as I have a whole lot to learn, right? And I'm all still going to keep coming back, you know, and uh, keep learning. Uh, so the third tradition, the desire to stop using, because I'm no one chip wonder either. And, uh, you know, there was there was definitely some uh, different looks when I came in to certain meetings, you know, but I knew those certain people that are still in my circle today uh, love me enough to uh, keep me around, right? And uh, so I've learned a whole lot uh, the past six years. Um, as far as, the, uh, I like what you said, as far as doing the tradition where you do the steps, because I need to learn how to take care of myself while I'm doing this stuff. I need to give myself a break, right? And I was, I was thinking about all this while everybody was sharing. And, uh, you know, as far as the autonomy goes uh, with myself, you know, depends on how much effort I put in is how much I'm going to get back, right? So, uh, you know, I do a whole lot of work, you know, to my, with myself, you know, and I, I get a whole lot back. You know, I get a whole lot of, you know, I get to open my mind to hear other people share, uh, to hear their experience, and that know that the way I, I see it is not the way it is always. You know, my reality is in here is completely different than realities out here, right? And how I look at things. Um, but it, it's gotten it's got it's gotten different, right? Um, you know, so I'm definitely grateful to be clean today and uh grateful to be at a, another convention, you know, uh at Georgia Regional. I always love these conventions. Uh I will keep coming back to these things as long as they're open. Uh, thank you for letting me share. Thank you, Bruce. Thanks, Bruce. Anybody else? All right, thanks, everybody, for a great meeting. All right, at this time, we're going to circle up and do the weed version of the serenity prayer. Good job. Good job. Good job. Thanks, Bob.